Vice President Kamala Harris has a tight schedule in which to decide on a running mate. Around a dozen people are being vetted. The outside team handling this vetting process began holding conversations with some of the candidates on Tuesday. Harris's team plans on finishing this up by August 7th to meet an Ohio ballot deadline. That is not much time at all. So Robbie Mook joins us now. He was the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign, so he was very involved in the vetting process there. Robbie, it's so good to see you. Really great to be on. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, you know, I remember, Robbie, trying desperately to get any shred of information out of you for months about who Hillary Clinton's running mate was going to be. Obviously, now we're looking at weeks, not months. Explain how the vetting process normally works and how it's going to have to work in this case when the team has just two weeks to pick a running mate. Yeah, well, yes, normally you have months to do this. Now we're down to weeks, I would even argue days on this, because mm -hmm. I think that this this team is trying to move faster on this. Look, you usually start with a list of maybe 20 people, get that down to 10 people, really vet those 10 people hard. You know, you you, you hire a professional law firm, Eric, Eric Holder's firm has been retained again this time to do that. Winnow that down even more to, let's say, three or four. And the thing that we had the ch opportunity to do on the Clinton campaign that I don't know how much time the Harris campaign is going to have to do was get get these folks out on the trail, you know, watch how they campaign, watch how they perform. We've seen a lot of the people being talked about on cable television, for example, but there's probably not as much time here to actually go campaign with the nominee in the way that that you'd like to be able to do. When a campaign is thinking through possible running mates, how do you weigh Picking someone who could help win you a key state, like Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, versus someone who maybe can help you tap into excitement in the party's base, like, say, a Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. How did you weigh those kinds of attributes when you ultimately, or well, when Hillary Clinton ultimately settled on uh, Tim Kaine, the uh, senator from Virginia? Yeah, it's really a matrix on this, right? Certain people bring certain things. And so what, what attributes do you care about or think you need more? And every race and every campaign is very different. I think this campaign is special in a few ways. The first is uh, this vice presidential nominee is coming out almost at the same time as the presidential nominee herself. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is going to be more of a team uh, than, than would be normal. So that's number one. I think that makes this VP pick just a little bit more important uh, than it might have been in uh, other cycles. The other thing you have here is an array of really strong uh, individuals from the battleground states. You know, the governor, we have governors in in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. They're all, they're all popular. Uh, you know, uh, we have a popular senator from Arizona. So we have this array of people who could potentially bring some performance in those states. Now, I'm always of the belief that vice presidential candidates can't get you a ton. It's not like you can just attach them on and all of a sudden you, you bring an entire uh, demographic onto the campaign. But here's the thing. For, you, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania, very popular governor, won by 20 points. If he could bring you a half a point in that state, I mean, that might be the margin of victory. These, you know, those those three Midwestern states have been won by such tiny margins for two presidential cycles uh, in a row now. So I actually think this is an embarrassment of riches this year. I don't think she can go wrong with any of the, you know, three or four folks uh, that are being talked about. Uh, and so I'm, I'm confident she's going to have somebody strong. Robbie, I thought about you on Sunday afternoon when President Biden announced that he would be stepping aside because I, I thought back to the 2016 campaign and what would have happened if someone came to you three months before Election Day and said, hey, guess what? This is no longer the Clinton campaign. This is now the Cain campaign. You've got to completely turn this ship around. You've got to focus it around an entirely different candidate, an entirely different strategy. How difficult would that be? And how do you even go about doing something like that? Yeah, it's interesting. And a lot of the conversations I've had with people, they right away go to the kind of operational and mechanical aspects of the campaign. And the and the money, frankly, the the amazing part about this transition was you had a campaign that was well over a year old, well oiled machine, well staffed, offices all over the country, the ground game in place, 
You had a bank account with uh, well over $100 million uh, set up. Of course, they've raised a lot more since. Mm -hmm. All the operational and financial piece of this was in place. What they're really rushing to do right now is figure out what's the story that we need to tell. But th but this team is also very familiar with her. You know, she's the vice president. It's not like she, you know, she was, she was a governor halfway across the country. And so they're moving very fast at uh, Future Forward, uh, the, the super PAC that had been supporting President Biden and is now supporting the vice president uh, is out all, just minutes ago uh, with an ad. So this is moving very fast. But it's gone very smoothly. I think this is just about as perfect uh, a situation uh, as you could have. Do they need to bring, do you think, um, an individual or a few individuals in from the outside who can really capture the vice president's voice uh, in, the, in, a, in the same way that they were really focused on capturing Joe Biden's voice until about five days ago? Yeah, and I, I'm sure you're going to see, um, you know, some some d definitely new people come in. Obviously, the the vice president had a team already in place, both on mm -hmm. her official side and on the campaign side. So I think you'll see those people uh, move into roles, you know. But it's not um, a campaign needs to be able to do certain things, and in this case, it needs to be able to tell a story. So that might be one people, that might be two people, but mm -hmm. the, I'm confident they'll bring together the team that they need. No. Okay. Well, we'll be watching because they'll have to do it soon. Robbie Mook, the uh, <laughs> exactly. former campaign manager for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Thank you so much for joining us.